going on? It's Neil from the Pentatonic Way, and welcome to another edition of How to Solo Over Blank. In this case, backing tracks. A new backing track every week, uh, day, that I find on YouTube, and I bring it to you. I really haven't jammed over it too much. It's almost like an unboxing video. Um, just to show you that the Pentatonic Scale works over everything. Uh, we got a great track today, A Dirty Swamp Blues by Quist. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to invite you to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If the first time on this channel, subscribe. If you have any feelings about this video, if it's good or bad, please comment me. Let me know. I love it. Um, like the video. Let YouTube know that you like it and all that stuff. It really helps support the channel and whatnot. So, all right. Let's get into it. A little Dirty Swamp Blues by Quist, all right? This just came out the other day, and I saw it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. I feel like I'm not the best blues player in the world, so that's a good reason to practice. All right, let's listen to Quist tear it up on his mouth hop. Who even knew he played harp? Yeah. All right, I'll try to solo. <laughs> Leave me hanging, Quist. Alright, something like that. I think that week of blues jams we had like a month ago, maybe I got a little better at the blues. I don't know. I'm still not I'm still not as good, I think, as other people that play the blues. So I'll show you what I did over it, so maybe it'll help you. Hey, what's up man? It's good to see you again. Alright. Ready for some blues? <laughs> Alright, let me show you what I was doing there. Um, I was using a combination of minor pentatonic and dominant pentatonic. All right. Um, so for let's try it on the 12th fret because when you think of E minor blues or E blues in general, it should jump to your head first. 12th fret is the place to, to kind of hang out. All right. So we got the first shape of the pentatonic here and we're going to put it to 12th fret. So it's going to sound like this. All right, um, so we get the root, flat three, four, five, flat seven, root, flat three, four, five, flat seven, root, flat three. 
cool. So we could use that or the, the um, alternative scale we can use is the dominant pentatonic because it's an E7, right? So if you want to mix it up, there's a lot of E in this progression. You can mix it up and use that. So in that case, you end up with the root, second, third, fifth, flat seven, root, second, third, fifth, flat seven, root, second, and third, if you want there. All right? So, you know, sometimes maybe the first four E's, you play the pentatonic. Then after that A7, you come back and do some E dominant. You know, it's really going to catch someone's ear. Um, but for the four chord and the five chord, that's the A7 and the B7, I always have most luck playing the dominant pentatonic, right? So for A, it's going to be right there on your 12th fret. So what I would use is this shape, um, that third note there on the 12th fret is your root. So you end up with the 5th flat 7, root, 2nd, 3rd, 5th, flat 7, root, 2nd, 3rd, 5th, flat 7. Cool. So, LK Crocheting, where are you from, man? I, uh, I'm in New England right now. All right, just creating some banter. It's awesome to have someone on here to chat with. All right, on with the lesson. Um, then we have B7, right? So what you could do is take this shape and move it up two frets. So it's on the 14th fret. Right? And that's what I think I was doing, just because it's super simple. You just go, all right, I'm just going to move that shape up, move it back down to the A, and back to the E minor. But if you want to challenge yourself a bit, and I think I'll do this in the next uh, demonstration, you could use this shape based on the 11th fret, right? Because there's your B. So you end up with the third, fifth, flat seven, root, second, third, fifth, flat seven, root, second, third, and fifth. Cool. And you can see, like, so you end up on the 11th, and that leads you right back to that 12th. So that'll kind of, like, take your licks and force them to, to like outline a resolution and stuff. So. All right, cool. So that's a lot to remember. I'll leave that scale up. No, I'll leave this one up because you can use that on the 12th and then the 14th. If it's a lot, it's a lot of scales. You can see up above. If you want, throw a few bucks. You can become a patron um, and get all these cheat sheets and a lot more over there, you know? So that way you don't have to keep it in your head. You can have it right in front of you and be like, all right, I'm jamming on this right now. So, all right, let me try this out again. You can try using A minor and B minor pentatonics over those, but I don't have any luck with that. You know, only on the one does it seem to work for me, but let's see. I do dominant.
Thanks, brother. And just flounder around. Cool, man. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you so much. So yeah, those sounded good, I thought. That E7 dominant gives you a different flavor. I don't know if you guys ever heard of um, Blue Saracino from back in the day, the Plaid album, Never Look Back. Man, that was a huge influence on me. He's an amazing player. All right, brother. Take care. I'll catch you tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, thanks for watching. All right, so... um. Let me see, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Blue Saracino, that guy is amazing. And that's what that sound reminds me of, that like dominant seven. It's very major, but also bluesy at the same time. Um, and I wanted to point out something too while I was doing it there. So we all know, uh, let me go back over here. The pentatonic, right? Awesome, brother. Thanks for watching, man. I really appreciate it. You're the man. Um, Cool, so we know that here on the G string, uh, we have the blues note. So that's on the 15th fret, right? You know, you can do all sorts of like cool stuff there. But you might not really think about it, but it's also here behind that 12th fret, right? On... Um, the, the B string. So you have cool sounds like that, right? That That's like, I I think I picked that up from Dimebag Daryl recording or something. I was like, what is that? And that's just not easy to do if, you, if you're using it here. Like, like, you can do it, but it doesn't sound... And you can... Uh, Sounds like otherworldly. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's a cool thing, a little trick. And if you do that same thing on the bottom string, so you're adding it at the 11th fret there, now you have the major um, 7, right? Something like that, a little sloppy, but... Kind of cool if you want to throw out some like crazy sounding licks. All right, where are we at? We got 14 minutes. All right, I can throw you another spot to play that. I always like to have two, you know? So you have home base and you have second base. <laughs> so we're going to get to second base today. All right, so let's check out where you can play it around here. There's your other E that a lot of people know, right? The seventh fret over there on the A string. So you would use this shape of the pentatonics right there on the seventh fret. All right. So what you end up is the fifth, flat seven, root, flat three, four, five, flat seven, root, flat three, four, five, flat seven. All right. Cool. So that you may know. And of course, you got your blues note there. 
Loose note there. Right there. All right. <laughs> Somewhere around there. I never remember it on that shape. I only ever think of it on that first shape. So I'm trying to make a point to think, all right, where's my blue shape in this, this uh, you know, shape of the pentatonic? Anyway, it's a lot of shape talk. How about dominant pentatonic? What are we going to use? Where can we find a dominant pentatonic right around there? Now, this isn't the most uh, convenient shape or convenient fingering of the A dominant pentatonic, but it's the one that's right here, you know? Uh, looks like my CPU is working. All right, so if I'm choppy, I'm sorry. Um, let's see. So you're starting on the second. You got the third, fifth, flat seven, root. Second, third, fifth, flat seven, root. Second, third. All right. It's like my least familiar, that one and the fifth one are my least familiar shapes of the pentatonic, dominant pentatonic. So, but it's very cool because it has a lot of these sort of, you know, like, I don't know, diagonal shapes in it, so you can kind of do some cool sweeping sort of stuff. Yeah, maybe. Maybe maybe you can. I don't know if I can. All right, and then B7, we have it right here, and that's going to be like this, because our B is here, so it's the first shape of the dominant pentatonic. So you get the root, second, third, fifth, flat seven, root, second, third, fifth, flat seven, Root second. All right, cool. Um, E7, right? We want to use one of those every once in a while. So that'll also be based on this seventh fret E on the A string. It's the same shape we use for A in the other position. So what we end up doing is starting on the fifth, flat seven, root second, third, uh, root second third fifth flat seven root second third fifth flat seven all right so let me jam on this real quick see if i can make that second shape of the pentaton dominant pentatonic work for me Something like that. I'm gonna bounce around now.
Ha 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 All right, cool. I hope you enjoyed this. I did. This is the best part of my day, jamming with you guys. Uh, I love when people show up, like LT Crocheting. Thank you, man. Thanks for giving a shout out. And uh, yeah, check out the Patreon if you want to learn more. If you want these cheat sheets for all the how to lessons and stuff like that. And it helps me keep my power amps on, all right? So, all right. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.